Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining another episode of the Educational Leadership Podcast. We have another very special guest. Before we introduce our guest and start today's topic, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Ideal Impact. Ideal Impact has given hundreds of millions of dollars to public education in the form of a free gift that can be used for higher teacher salaries or whatever the needs may be. It doesn't involve taxpayers, doesn't involve the government. So if your district needs more funding, reach out to Ideal Impact. Okay, awesome guest today. And before we get into today's conversation, give a shout out to our co-host, Corinne French. Hello, I can't wait to get started. You know how much I appreciate women in leadership. So this is going to be a great day. Yes, we have Dr. Donaldson from Everman ISD. Dr. Donaldson, thank you for joining us today. Hi, good afternoon. And thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm excited to be here. Yes, we're excited to have you as our guest. And so before we get into today's topic, what tell us a little bit about your background for those listening in. You know, how'd you get how'd you get into public education and where you are today as superintendent? Okay, awesome. Well, um, again, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm a product of public education, um, graduated from Fort Worth ISD many moons ago. Um, I started my teaching journey in 1997 in uh, public ed um, in Fort Worth ISD. And in 2006, um, I began my journey in education in Everman ISD. And so I've served Everman ISD for over 15 years and became superintendent here um, beginning with the 21-22 school year. Um, very wow. nice, very awesome background. It's always always uh, very cool hearing the story of, of because superintendent, that's a demanding job. You have a lot, as you know, a lot, a lot of roles, responsibilities. Where, yeah, it's just, and it, it's it's so critical to, to a community and the growth of students. And um, so we applaud you for what you're doing out at Everman. So in public education, there's a lot of topics so that people are passionate about. So we hear some some districts are really focused on finance. Some are focused on other areas. What's your district really focused on? Our district, of course, is focused on um, safety as number one. Uh, we want to make sure that our, our students and our staff are safe and feel safe. Um, so that they're able to learn in the, the best environment possible. So safety is um, always our priority here, uh, in addition to uh, recovering lost learning um, and, uh, you know, just making sure that our students have the same opportunities as other students um, so that they're equipped and prepared for the future ahead of them. Outstanding. Right. Oh, go ahead, Corinne. Sorry. Well, so for a long time, I was going to study female superintendents. I'm working on my doctorate. And so this is always so wonderful to me when I get to meet female superintendents, because being a superintendent, like Gary, like you said, I think it's one of the hardest jobs on the world and on the planet. Planet. Uh, I was a trustee for 10 years and I have so much respect for you um, and any superintendent. But I want to know this. When you were a teacher in Fort Worth ISD, did you know that you wanted to be a superintendent? And then second part of that question is talk to us about that path and about that process. Because I think there are other people out there that might want to be a superintendent. And I think hearing um, from you can be helpful. Okay. Um, well, when I started this journey in 1997, um, again, it was my passion was just working with kids and being in the classroom and teaching. And I love that. I love seeing um, the light bulbs come on. I love to see the, the energy uh, and the passion from the kids when they get it. Um, I taught science. And so I'm a, a scientist at heart. And so um, that was always uh, my passion. Um, as I continued teaching, I had mentors and administrators um, that um, just imparted into my life and spoke to me and said, no, you, you need to go get your master's. No, you, you need to do this. And so they continuously created opportunities for me um, in, in the area of administration and leadership. Um, I often said, no, I'm, I'm good where I am. Um, I'm one that believes in things happen uh, you know, in timing, you know, when the time is right and when it's your time, the doors will open for you. Um, and so I was never one that just kind of pushed my way through and I didn't have this plan that I had to, um, you know, 
climb this career ladder in this number of years. I, I didn't do that. Um, I was just enjoying the journey where I was. And so as I was doing that, um, I didn't know at that time that I was learning so much and operating, you know, as, as a leader from being mm -hmm. department chair and serving on different com uh, committees. And again, my mentors and principals at that time gave me those opportunities. And so I was just really learning, not knowing that all of that was preparing me for this seat here. Mm -hmm. And so not, um, not rushing the journey, but really taking everything in and learning um, on whatever step I was on, I was learning. Mm -hmm. And so even um, as becoming an assistant principal, I served as assistant principal in Fort Worth ISD for a number of years as well. And had the opportunity again to just learn under principles that uh, really took time to to mentor me and train me and give me those opportunities. And so when I uh, transitioned here to Everman as um, assistant principal, uh, again, same thing. And then opportunities just became available um, in 2021 at the end of that school year. Um, the superintendent at that time, Dr. Amos, um, passed away, and he was, um, he's amazing, still is amazing, and so he was my my mentor, and he was the reason I'm here in Everman today. Um, he actually hired me to be his assistant principal at the time, and so um, through the years, just learning from him, uh, growing uh, in the opportunities, I became assistant superintendent here uh, in Everman ISD, and then now superintendent. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mentor. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Corinne. No, I'm sorry. I know when when we have a a, a female guest on that I, uh, I it's so hard for Gary to get uh, get a word in edgewise <laughs> because I'm like I want to know I want to know because I want to help other women. I want to shorten the learning curve, but you just I, I want to shorten the learning curve. But you just said something when you're talking about your story of not being so focused on all those next steps, right. and I think that's I that's powerful because I. I feel like maybe that that sometimes what holds us back is that we're always looking for something else. And this could be in any area of our life, but maybe in leadership that we aren't taking the opportunity to learn where we're at mm -hmm. uh, and really take advantage of those learning opportunities. So that's tough. I think that sh changing that shift because you want to be you want, do want to be planning. I mean, you can't become superintendent, uh, you know, overnight. I mean, it takes you and you don't get that by luck. You know, it's it's a you you worked really hard to get to that spot, but I appreciate that story. So thank you for that. Yes. yes, yeah. It's all about. Sounds like Dr. Donuts. It's all about doing really well in the roles that you are currently, mm -hmm. and then with with you know a, a bigger vision. Does that mm -hmm. does that sound right? Or absolutely, of, of course. Um, I had to you know do well in this in the roles that I had previously in order to continue to progress. Um, you know, through the system and be effective um, because, of course, everything is about our kids. So no matter what seat, I had to be effective in that seat in order to impact students' lives uh, in a positive way, whether that was a teacher, being principal, assistant principal, assistant superintendent, um, I had to be effective there. I'm just, uh, you know, very grateful that I had the opportunities and, you know, like I said, not knowing, um, you know, sometimes we don't always understand the big picture. Um, but as things were given to me, it was like, okay, yes, I'll do that, you know, because I was learning from that. And so through my experience as assistant superintendent uh, here in Everman ISC, I had the opportunity of um, really working in every department uh, in great detail, except for you know, uh, finance and uh, the the CNI department. You know, I had my hands in a little bit of everything, but all the other workings of the district with operations and transportation, and I got an opportunity to work with that uh, within those departments, and that really helped me uh, gain a better understanding and prepare me for this seat. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I've I've picked up on a few things that you that you've said here that are that I think our listeners really really need to hone in on. Um, whether you're in public education or not. It, so one thing you said initially was mentors, right? So you mm -hmm. you had mentors. You said mentors like four or five times. You had people that that were helping you. And for me, that I think of that as a kind of a two-sided coin where one, you have people that are willing to help, but also someone that's willing to listen and be humble and learn. And 
and I, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes it takes that, that humility to do that. And I don't know if everyone has that mindset, but so I think that's a really good mindset to have. Um, so, um, Corinne, what, did you want to add something? Well, I'm, so I want our guests to know that we don't rehearse these questions. And so I, I'm not putting you on the spot, Dr. Donaldson, but I, I, I want to press into something that you said. And so, um, should, so to our guests and our listeners that, uh, this is always an organic conversation. My mind is going a bunch of places, but you mentioned all the different areas and roles and where you felt comfortable in. And, and you mentioned that the one area you didn't work in was the CNI and then finance. I, is this a true statement or can we talk about this statement? I feel like sometimes female superintendents or even female board members, I'm not trying to make everything gendered, but I am studying, uh, is, I, I am studying women leadership because I want to help women like I mentioned earlier, kind of shorten the learning curve. Do you feel like sometimes women might shy away from certain things because they don't understand it completely and maybe miss out on um, leadership because they think, well, I'm not good in that area. And so they just, uh, and and the part of the question that I, I'm wondering if this is true is that we're in some ways, because you are in STEM, you might not have that uh, same that might not have happened to you like you don't feel like you can't accomplish something they say that sometimes girls check out uh in third grade they, they feel like they're not good in math or whatever and I see my daughter still getting a 93 on physics I'm like honey that means you can do anything that means because you're getting the, you're a junior in high school and you can do anything does that did that stem background help or do you, did you have some of that imposter I know I'm, I'm, I'm saying lots of things right now but when you mentioned that about about finance, it just made me go off in a bunch of ways. Um, okay, and, and I think it just depends on the person. Um, that you know, some some people love a challenge, and mm -hmm. they you know can take on anything and have that growth mindset. I think it really depends on the person. Um, and I'm one that I just have that growth mindset. If I don't know it, I'm gonna learn it. I can do it. There, you know, there's nothing that um, I can't do if I put my mind to doing that the same thing that we do with our students we have that growth mindset you know you may not know it now but keep keep learning keep at it and you'll learn it and you'll you'll be able to do it so um I would I would say to anyone who's hesitant or maybe shying away because they haven't um learned all areas of uh, of what they want to learn just keep at it you know eat that elephant one one little bite at a time um, I had several, you know, conversations with my mentor, with Dr. Amos, uh, before his passing. He also was um, preparing me for a superintendency, and I was like, "No, I'm, I'm good. You know, your vision is my vision, and we're gonna uh, push Everman ISD forward." Um, but he, you know, also said, "Well, no, you, you know these areas, you know it." And so, just having, you know, that that village around you speaking. Mm -hmm. Um, um, life into to areas that you feel that you may not be confident in, you know, you have to surround yourself with people that are constantly pouring into you as well, I guess, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And I, I'm sorry about his passing. One of my mentors passed in COVID and I still find myself sometimes wanting to text her. Like it's just, and when I, when I feel like I need someone to say, yes, you might not understand that. That doesn't mean you're not qualified to do it. Right, and I right. think that the mentors uh, fill that space. And so I, I'm sad for you for that, but I'm sure he's so happy <laughs> with all the work that you've done. So thank you for sharing that. Well, I, it's my, you know, mission, of course, to make him, make him proud, of course, and, mm -hmm. and all the work that he uh, planted in all of us in Everman mm -hmm. ISD. But again, more importantly, is to make sure the students here in Everman have everything that they need to be successful mm -hmm. and have all the opportunities and that they're um, ready and that they're prepared to um, be productive members of society. Um, mm -hmm. As I tell the kids when I go around and I talk to them, high school, pre-K, that they're going to take care of me one day. And that's getting really close, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. as I get more seasoned. And so <laughs> I want to make sure that right. I'm doing everything that I can do to make sure that mm -hmm. they're prepared to live the lifestyle that they deserve to be able to live. Mm -hmm. You, you, your story kind of reminds me with um, you, you're talking about the different mentors and the, the influences in your life. And it reminds me, I, I read a book recently uh, called Who Not How, right? And I, I know in public ed or just any type of learning, it's easy to to want to pick up a book and read the book on the topic. Like, I don't understand this particular aspect. Let me get a book on it and read it. And the Who Not How talks about 
you don't always need to figure out how you need to figure out who can help mm-hmm. you get there and 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 the learning process is so much quicker and so and it just mm-hmm. as you were sharing there it just kind of made me think about that like you know mm-hmm. if there's a particular problem there's so many different ways to learn but just ha- finding that who to help you get to that next level seems seems so valuable yeah mm-hmm. absolutely um i think as in in every uh career uh, whether it's education the medical field i mean where we're at whatever the career is you have to network and you know really surround your people so surround yourself with people that have already walked this journey mm-hmm. you know um so that you can, you know, learn from them and connect with them. Um, there's no need to reinvent the wheel if it's already been um, invented. Mm-hmm. Love it. Well, I know we're running short on time here. And so I, I want to give the shout out question. I'm just curious. And uh, Corinne, you, you want to ask the question before that Before that question? Yeah, yes. I. So I, again, thank you so much for um, sharing your story with us today. I would love to know what kinds of things that keep you inspired and keep you going. If there's a book or a, a seminar or something Gary mentioned the, that the book, Who Not How. And is there, is there some kind of a book or just someone that inspires you? Oh my goodness. I can't, um, goodness, I have so many books. I'm trying to think. I should have one off the top of my um or a quote. It doesn't have to be. I mean, you mentioned your mentor and how important he was. So it can also just be yeah. a, a one-liner or something. It doesn't have to be a specific book. Right. I think one book that really is just a simple book that it helped um, focused, focus me is just that one word that will change your life book. It's just a little small red book, but it helps you to focus and it helps you to um, really make the main thing the main thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of outside chatter. Um a lot of things going on that we can get distracted with on a daily mm-hmm. basis and trying to balance everything. And so that book, the one word that changes um, your life um, helps to focus. So that's a really good book that I often kind of refer to, like, what's my word? What's my word? Mm-hmm. Um, but then other than that, it's, it's the kids. Um, I think mm-hmm. if you ask anyone in Everman ISD, they're going to say she loves the kids and just being mm-hmm. around the kids and learning from them, their interaction, their energy, seeing those light bulbs come on. That's my passion. That's why Mm -hmm. I do what I do is for them. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Love it. Love it. Okay. So now for the last question, (laughs) so so this is our shout out question. So who do you know in public ed that you think has just a great story or just, just some great insights to share with our listeners that you think they should come on the podcast. We'll get, we're doing a little shout out here. Well, goodness gracious. There are many. Um, wow. Um, there are so many. I know that um, if we're looking at superintendents, Dr. Uh, Latanya Goffney and Aldine ISD, she does amazing things um, in her district, and she's um, uh, one of my go-tos. And so she's she's she does amazing things. Um, if you'd like to get a different perspective, my chief uh, communication officer, Dr. Nikita Russell, um, will give a different perspective to education mm-hmm. from the communication perspective, especially in this um, day and time where information is so readily available, and you know the community can get information that's not true and think that it's true and Mm -hmm. how to kind of manage all that. Um, So I can send you a list of people, but those two for sure. Oh, I love that. Uh, Dr. Goffney is a friend of mine. She's been uh, on my my sessions, Women in Leadership, and she's, uh, oh my gosh, yes, I I love her. Gary, we've never had a chief communication person on. So if you'll let uh, Dr. Donaldson, if you'll let her, her know that we will be reaching out to her, I would love that because you're so right. The communication person uh, at a district is, is, it is crucial. And if a district doesn't have a communication person, someone is putting out the message and, and telling the story is important. So that could be, she could be our first guest um, that we, because usually we have superintendents or school board trustees. So I love it. Oh yeah. And and she's our, um, one of our backbones here at the district and you're right. She, um, tells our story um, Mm -hmm. and she does an amazing job. So Mm -hmm. I will definitely let her know. Awesome, that sounds like fun. Can't wait to hear her story and, you know, her perspective on public ed. 
And so now we're going to close out. But before we close out, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Ideal Impact. Ideal Impact's given hundreds of millions of dollars to public ed in the form of a free gift. So if your district needs to increase your teacher salaries or whatever the needs of the district are, these are unrestricted funds. Reach out to Ideal Impact. And Dr. Donaldson and Corinne, thank you all for being on the podcast. Corinne, thanks for co-hosting. <laughs> thank and you. For the, yes, yes. Such a, such a wonderful uh, guest today and, and conversation. And so, and for those of y'all that have been listening in, stay tuned for future episodes of the Educational Leadership Podcast.